All right. Welcome, everybody. And if you could take a seat, and uh, the people that sit in front are going to be eligible for a raffle, maybe. We'll see. We'll try not to pick on you too much. Yeah, <laughs> I can't promise that. <laughs> Okay, just, I just want to give a brief overview of what we're going to do tonight because tonight is really uh, dedicated to you. We want to make sure that we listen, give you an opportunity to give us a, a good indication on how things have been going since the fire. I do want to make one quick introduction. I, my uh, co-chair for the evening is Commissioner Peggy Littleton. The lessons learned area falls in her subcommittee and what we're trying to do is provide you an opportunity. We're going to have a series of lessons learned events, probably spaced out about three or four months, uh, so that we can get some feedback on how things are going, whether it's from the start of the fire through the entire recovery process. And what we want to find out from you is tell us those things that went right, what are the things that are going wrong, and from that, from our staffs and our various subcommittees, we're going to take a hard look at that. And if we need to make some policy decisions, then those are the things that we want to capture and have appropriate discussions at the, at the right time. Uh, the next time we meet, what we're going to do is we'll probably dedicate the first hour to kind of responding back to some of the questions that were raised. Now, naturally, if there are some uh, emergent questions that come up and we, if we have answers, we're going to send those out over the network, but formally we're going to do that at the next meeting, provide you with a, a PowerPoint presentation or whatever, just kind of go through some of the questions that were identified here, give you an opportunity to see that we're working and uh, trying to address those areas. But my goal is uh, a year from the date of the fire, I want to be able to produce a lessons learned document because, you know, this is the new normal. You know, unfortunately when we went through Waldo, who would even think that the, the Black Forest Fire would start up? But we need to be prepared, and we are now becoming national experts on what to do. And I think it's very important that we memorialize a lot of the things that are happening. Because, again, I, I talk to so many people, and I try to always, always emphasize the fact that how proud I am of all the people in El Paso County. You come together. You know, we get knocked down, but we, st we continue to stand and, str and strive together and we come together as a community and we learn from that. So I wanna make sure that we capture a lot of those good stories. But I also wanna make sure if there are things that we are doing wrong and we need to make some changes from a policy standpoint, that we actually take an action item and the elected officials raise their hand and say, hey, we need to make sure that we're going to go ahead and do something like that. And when we do that, it's gonna naturally dovetail into emergency preparedness. And that's why Commissioner Peggy Littleton, this fits right under her area. She's our lead on the commission when it comes to emergency preparedness. So we want to be able to be out front. And I don't know, if did you want to ma make a couple comments or we just want to go ahead and roll? Okay. So, so the ground rules tonight are there are no ground rules. We want to hear from you. Um, if you are, we have two mic stands over there, one right over here and over there. So if you have a question, feel free to go to the microphone. If you are shy, you can write down on the card your particular question, and one of our we have a couple staffers running around. We will take that card, and we will actually ask the question for you. Uh, if you want us to follow up with you, write down on the card your contact information so that we can go ahead and get back to you if you have a specific question with regard to your area. But again, I don't, I don't want you to feel like you have to hold back. I mean, we, we really want to give you an opportunity uh, to let us know how you feel. Um, and, you know, when I originally said that I was going to do this, there were a lot of people that were like, oh, don't do this. And uh, to me, I think it's a very healthy exercise because the last thing I want ha to happen is that if you're frustrated about certain things, if you're hearing things in the community, true or false, that you don't have an opportunity to have those addressed, asked and answered. And that's what we do uh, as far as our county government. We are here. We work for you. We are in a customer service business. So if you're concerned about something, then, then it's important to us. We have various members through, there are several committee members that are probably floating throughout here. We've got, I know Black Forest Together. We've got Crosses for Losses. I see a couple people from uh, Black Forest Fire that are here. I know a couple people are wearing a couple hats. We might have somebody from the Sheriff's Office here. Aspen Point's here. Uh, Senator Kent Lambert is, is here. So I want to thank him for, for uh, coming out and spending some time 
But what we're going to do, this is obviously going to be videotaped. Uh, we're going to capture all these things. I've got some great note takers that are over there. They're going to try to write down your questions. So uh, try to be very succinct. I might ask you to kind of uh, restate your questions so that we capture that. But we're going to get all that information back, and then we're going to make sure that we, we get those answers to you. This is not going to be an opportunity where we will answer your questions. That might frustrate some people, but I think it's more important to allow you an opportunity to kind of give us a sense of where you're at, what are those issues, because sometimes when you create a back and forth, we kind of get bogged down into one area. We are trying to get a good sense of the temperature of where we're at in the overall Black Forest fire recovery process. So, so with that, I want to go ahead and open up. So if anybody wants to jump up and run to the mic, go right ahead and we can start from there. And if nobody asks a question, says anything, I'm going to say, well, things are great. We can go have some pizza and go watch some football. So, Hello. Uh, my name is Harold Haver. Uh, we lost our home and everything in the uh, fire, as did uh, many. I guess my question is, we received our uh, new tax assessment from the uh, assessor's office. And I'm kind of curious as to why, uh, if a uh, home and other structures, we had uh, a, a, uh, an outbuilding, if the value of the outbuildings and home is generally five times what the land value is, and all that is gone uh, and hold off now to the dump, why is it the uh, taxes are only cut by one half? So, so basically, you would like us to go back with, to the assessor and ask him to really explain the valuation of, of the property post-fire? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Uh, another question. Sure. And, and this is maybe not answerable. Uh, the uh, governor of Colorado has a, um, a wildland urban interface committee going right now. And I believe uh, come September 30th, they're going to have their recommendations. Uh, do you have any insight as to what uh, is going on there, and uh, would you care to uh, take a guess at what uh, may happen? Would they take, like the Black Forest, draw a circle around or a line around it, and say, urban uh, wildland interface, we are going to assess you a special tax so we can buy airplanes, et cetera? We did hear about that, and we, of course, do not have a comment Thank at you. this point in time. Any other questions from this side of the room? We're going to bounce back and forth. And there's a microphone right in the back, if you could go there. Yes, you actually have to go to the microphone. There you go. <laughs> I know. I know. Check, check. Yes, very good, sir. OK. Uh, my name is Anthony David, and I'm the owner of the Black Forest Mill. Um, and I have a couple things that I'd like to discuss here. I, I understand there was a meeting last night, and we didn't all get informed. And uh, I'd like to know how we can all go about getting on an email list so that the people that it affects can be at these meetings. I think that there's uh, an agenda trying to be pushed forward without input from everybody that may not agree with that agenda. And I think we need to all be brought into the loop. This is our community, and we should have a say-so in what happens. Well, um, just to, to stick with that first point, um, which meeting um, did you want to go to that you didn't hear, receive a notice about? The, me the meeting last night. Uh, Was that the fire district meeting, or? Yeah. OK. Well. I we will take a note to make sure that we pass that on to the fire district. I'm not sure what their, their meeting notice requirements on, but we will ask them to make sure that they, at least the issue came up, and we'll ask them to address that. As far as from the county-sponsored meetings, uh, and this I'm going to deviate from my own comments here, but you can go to the, our website, and that's www.bffassistance.com. And if you go to our assistance page, you can actually click on a box that says sign me up to receive email listings and you can also sign up for the various subcommittees so that you can receive their email information 
So for everybody in the audience, if you are not receiving direct email communication with regard to that, that's a great way. That's www.bffassistance.com. That's where we're trying to funnel and post a lot of our meeting information. So I didn't mean to cut you off, but I wanted to at least provide no, you with that. No, that's perfect. And as I suspected, it was my ignorance that was, the, uh, was the, at fault here. Um, now, I'd like to move on. Let me on. just ask real quick one question. So um, are you signed up on any of the different Black Forest websites to get information then? OK. Um, if you can let us know afterwards which one it was that didn't post that, we'll make sure to connect with that group as well and to make sure that they are posting everything. I also have my iPad here tonight, and I can come around if you are not signed up for either the Black Forest Together website or the BFF for our El Paso County. Just raise your hand as I'm kind of walking around, and we'll sit down and we'll do that right now while I'm here. And. Um I know that most of us have Outlook, and Outlook, Outlook shares information from computer to computer, and I'm thinking that if we could have all the meetings that involve the community uh, go out to all the people that it concerns, it, it would really be great. Now, I don't know if that's possible or not, but that's a secondary issue altogether. Um, I also would like to ask, I, I'd like to qualify this statement by saying, first of all, that uh, my neighbors at Cathedral Pines, I harbor no animosity towards them and I accept them into the fold. And I also uh, feel that our firefighters and our first responders and the volunteers did an incredibly brave job and they, and they fought with all they had. I do, however, have issue with the strategists that put forth the strategy and the contingency plan and the plan of action to fight a fire in Black Forest of this magnitude or any other. We fought this fire from the rear. We fought this fire, I believe that they were over at Cathedral Pines watering the roses. I st stood on my roof and wet my house down and I watched the fire steadily walk towards my house over a course of two hours. Um, no one ever tried to establish a, f a fire line to starve this fire of fuel. Uh, Black Forest Road is a perfect fire line. They could have taken a D D8 and a D5 and cut a line and then laid suppressant down for 100 yards to the east of that and kept that from jumping and doing all the damage that it did east of Black Forest Road. I, I think that somebody needs to be brought uh, to accountability for poor strategy and we need to look at how this stuff works in the future because what we're doing now is we're taking and suggesting that people clear their property 100 feet away from their dwelling. We're suggesting that they put in fire suppression systems that uh, um, probably won't work for this case. Uh, you would have to have gravity fed so that in, in the uh, absence of any electricity, the, the system would still function because if people don't go out and start their generator every month, it's not going to start when it needs to. And so we have too many moving parts. We can keep this simple. We can, through attrition, replace shingle, asphalt shingles with metal roofs and we can zero scape out five or six feet from our house and put rocks and non-flammable materials we can keep our gutters clean, and we can take no-nonsense steps towards keeping our houses from burning. My trees that were immediately around my house were untouched except by the heat of my house burning. This fire was airborne, and uh, embers landed on my asphalt roof and burned it and burned my house to the ground and everything I own with it. And uh, I just think that we need to have plans in place, and they need to be checked, and they need to be checked again, and then they need to be checked by somebody else. Well, let's kind of break some of that down as far as you at least, I know it's based on your, the first part of your question, would like a somewhat of an explanation as far as the initial response strategy, because you were questioning that they were fighting it from the rear. 
So you would like an explanation as far as what actually happened, what procedures did they follow? If that, is that correct? That's absolutely correct. Okay. And then it sounds like you have some suggestions with regard to some of the other things that should be considered you know, while we're having a debate on whether the sprinklers or other fire suppression systems, you have some other recommendations that you feel should be addressed. Yes, I, I feel that there's a simpler, it's not always the most complex and expensive right. fix to a problem that's the proper fix. Okay. It's more often the simpler and the more common sense. Understand. And we will provide the fire district with a copy of this YouTube so they can look at that and Hopefully, we'll invite them to a session where they can actually kind of go through a presentation and address some of those concerns. So. Well, thank you very much for your time and allowing me to uh, vent and voice my opinion. Uh, I appreciate it, and I thank everybody for listening to me and, and uh, taking your time. Great. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. Next question. Hello, it's uh, me again, Harold Haver. Say, uh, you said somebody was here from the uh, Black Fires uh, Black Forest Fire Department tonight? I believe so, yes. Could you uh, ask that they come up in summers? We were at the meeting last night, but for the benefit of those who weren't there, there were th uh, three main points that were discussed. And also, um, I guess the question will be, uh, they were making a recommendation to the county commissioners to vote on. And uh, I, I guess we'd like to have some input on that. So if somebody could come up and explain, uh, you know, just a brief overview of last night's meeting. Well, I'm trying to figure out how to properly handle that because I understand that uh, there, there are some comments and concerns. But uh, unless somebody from the, the fire district just wants to be, be basically state this was the recommendation, I really want to, if you have a concern about the recommendation, that's what we want to capture so that we can give that to them versus having a back and forth on the particular recommendation. So I would rather uh, capture your particular concern based on what you heard. Okay, um, if I'm not mistaken, uh, they uh, voted to adopt the uh, 2009 uh, ICC code and uh, that will be presented to the county commissioners for follow-on vote. Secondly, they voted to uh, adopt the, I believe it's called the water fund, which means um, if you're building a house, replacing your house, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, if your house is over 47,000 cubic feet, and I believe this is, includes house, garage, and any uh, overhang porches, which, you know, when it comes down to it, that's not that big of a house in, in some cases, uh, you have a choice to put in a uh, sprinkler system a choice to put in a cistern, or a choice to pay a fee of $5,600. And that money would be, you know, given to the fire department to purchase additional equipment and hoses. Um, what was interesting is an individual got up there and said, none of the last 10 or maybe even dozen Colorado forest fires were started by a uh, individual structure. All those mitigation options that were presented uh, were only intended to contain a single structure fire, yeah. nothing to do with wildfire. We all experienced a wildfire. It seems like we're putting a Band-Aid on a, on a wound that uh, really is, uh, is not the, the cause of the problem. Excellent. Okay. Thank you very much. And once that gets scheduled, um, to appear before the Board of County Commissioners. We will make sure that uh, we provide proper notice so that people can come out and share their opinion with us before we, uh, we take action. Next question. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. I'm William Lofton. Can you hear me okay? Yes. I have some real serious concerns with the Sheriff's Department's performance during the fire. Yeah. And on, on the afternoon of the fire, I had six law enforcement officers in my yard, meaning in the corner of Holmes and the corner of Vesey Road, and none of those offered to assist me in getting out. This is at 530. Uh, I don't understand why the fire wasn't stopped at Milam Road. That was a natural fire break. You stopped it on Shoop, and you stopped it on Highway 83, or why it wasn't stopped on Holmes Road or Black Forest Road or Herring Road, those were all natural fire breaks. And uh, 
You know, I talked to you mm, two weeks ago about uh, Wanda, if the fire department was invited to this meeting and I called today and they didn't know anything about it. Well, they, they have representatives here, so. Where they, are they? You've got members of the fire board right here. So we, we have ways of communicating. I understand you asked Chief Harvey if he personally knew about it, but we do, we wanted to make sure that we extended an invitation for everybody to be here. Plus, we are gonna provide this YouTube video and any sort of comments back to them and ask them to schedule an opportunity to be able to present that information. I'm one of the lucky ones. My house didn't burn, but uh, I have no reason. I'm blessed, but uh, I have my heart goes out to all the other people. Uh, the 70% on Holmes Road that burn, I don't think they should have. Right. Thank you very much. <laughs> Questions on this side of the aisle? You're, you're the only brave one tonight, right? Yes. Okay. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. And if you know you're, if you're going to have, have a question, just go ahead and start kind of gravitating towards the microphone so that, uh, because we're, we're here, we'll be here until 7.30, but if we uh, end up needing to wrap up earlier, we will wrap up earlier. But I just want to make sure that we provide you with an opportunity to share with us how things are going. And also, while she's queuing up her question, I would like to find out if we did anything right. Uh, you know, it's always good, because we want to be able to tell the story. You know, I can personally think of the school in the woods and, and the fire districts that, that saved that particular thing. I think that's something that should be applauded something that we should capture and, and as we go forward. It's not all negative, so let's want to keep that in, a, in our frame of mind. Um, I have two-fold questions. My name's Michelle Andre. I lost everything on Rusk Lane, and I'm very visible because I'm homeless, so basically I've been approached by a lot of people out in Black Forest, and the same recurring questions I have are two. Um, the first one is there's been a lot of fundraisers um, at different, from different places like Tri Lakes Cares, um, United Way. There's one on the August 25th, and then the Black Forest Community Foundation. What is that, and where is the money from that going? Okay. Um, I want. And then there was like a there was another festival that was um, like a sheep herder thing, where there was um, dog trials and stuff, and they tried to raise money. I, I want to know where all the. F I mean, I'm not the only one, but every fire victim and the people out in Black Forest, I think I can speak for everyone, wants to know where the money for the fire victims is at. Right. Is that the bottom line here or what? Yes. I mean, I mean I, I, I'm not asking you personally, I'm right. asking everybody in the room, how do we find that out? I get that question over and over and over and no one can answer it. And, and these f fundraisers are great, I've even attended some of them, but where is the money going? What is the Black Forest Community Foundation? Um, I've been told that I can go to La Ferre, all fire victims can go to La Ferre and actually um, get help, get financial assistance. How do we do that? How do we do that? And, and why is that not a, a message? Why is that not a message for everyone out there? Um, and, and I've been told that I can, but that's, I've been told that by Salvation Army in the Springs. Go to, go to La Ferre and get money. The, they have a foundation set up for money for people who lost everything and didn't have insurance. And for other victims that were in the fire that did have it, that the insurance isn't covering the damage. Um, and then the other, the other question is, um, on Shoop Road, that keeps, it keeps flooding, okay? It keeps flooding across there, and there's lots of signs now for days. And, and a lot of, even the builders are asking me, what, why are those signs there when nothing is happening? Um, because they did that project after the flooding at Burgess and, let's see, what it, where is that, you know, Burgess, you know what I'm talking about, Burgess and, and Black Forest Road. Right. Okay, they, they started that after, I know the money, monies were allocate, allocated before, but they started that after the flooding. So my, I'm saying if, they're, if the county or whoever's in charge of that is getting that done, and then there's signs up for days where the, where the, where the road has had to be shut off and actually closed down by the sheriffs because the water was this high. And I have videos on my phone, I was there. I was helping those homeowners move a trailer before it washed down. They lost firewood. Uh, animals can't be out there. And I'm wondering why, why you know, when, when is that gonna happen? The signs have been up there for days, but nothing's happening. I, I, I just, 
and, and that's the same questions I keep being asked is, where's the money and why, is the, why are the signs up when there's no trucks turning and people slow down? And that, there was a day where there was a whole bunch of people there and they set up the signs after KC Lane, you know, the people in the KC Lane were trapped. But that's what, that's what the homeowners are asking me that asked me to come to this okay. meeting. Well, from the county standpoint, if I could, it sounds like you want to make sure that if their donations are being taken, that there's some sort of report back as far as what the money is being spent on. From the county standpoint, we will be able to provide that. There are a lot of other private organizations that are doing that, and we'll, you know, we will, we can't compel them to do that. But from the county standpoint, I do want to make sure right, we yeah, will address that. Right. Yeah, I just wanted to voice that, that now because if, if these are great, but. I think that people want to know how to, how do they get a help? How do they get help? Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, we will take a five minute break. Okay, we're gonna get started again. It sounds like we have a little bit of a break. I understand there's another meeting at seven o'clock, but I don't know what it's about, so I can't tell you about it. But uh, we're going to pick right up, and uh, anybody else that has a question, please feel free to go to the microphone, and we will start up again. Okay. And while everybody is uh, coming back to their seats again, I would like people to think about, I would love to hear a positive story tonight. I know we have, there has to be at least one, so I'm going to challenge everybody to at least think of one positive story, even if it's the one that I already talked about, the school in the woods, because I, you know, that's something that during the, during the incident, uh, I was out there with the sheriff on, on a detail, and we were driving by, kind of observing the scene, and there were two fire, fire engines that were there, I think one was from security, and the other one might have been from Boulder. And, and they basically made the decision that they were not going to let that school burn down. Uh, and, they, and they just, they did everything they possibly could to essentially draw a line and say, you know, we need something positive. We understand how important this particular school is for this area, and we were not going to let it burn down. And that's something that when we think that, you know, we, we look a year from now and we're telling a story, uh, this is a story that I want to make sure that it gets captured. A a absolutely, you know, and, and you know, when you think about the kids that are in school right now, uh, what sort of impact that is to them. So, you know, I would ask people in this audience to really think about the kids and make sure that if you start talking to them and they have issues or concerns or whatever, and I've extended the invitation, especially to District 20, and if they just want to ask somebody some questions, let me know. I love going out to the schools and talking to them, and they can explain and ask them, you know, at an appropriate level, you know, what we're doing. Talk to them about what they can do to get involved, because you'd be surprised. Little things that can help help out. And while I'm still filibustering, waiting for more people to come in here, so. But there was also another issue that came up during you know, the last long-term recovery meeting last month, and there was. A there's always a question about, you know, look, I know that people are going to, they've already told me that they're going to leave, that they're going to walk away. And, and what is the county going to do to essentially make sure that, you know, you know, we just don't leave a property in a state of disrepair? And, and I have to remind people that, you know, we're going through this process in two different phases. You know, 338 permits have been pulled for demolition, those types of things, about six for new construction. And so you do have some people that are ready and they're, they're willing to go ahead and start that process. But we also need to make sure we understand that we have people in this community that are just now coming to terms with what has happened to them. Uh, and we want to make sure that we put a safety net around there. There's an initial grieving process that people need to go through. And I can tell you as a county, we're going to respect that. And we're going to give those people an opportunity to grieve and we're going to work with them. We're not going to demand that they go ahead and do something like now, that's not how, what we do in El Paso County, and that's not something that I'm going to support. So I just want to make sure you understand that if you come across people like that, and that they need some help, and they just need to talk to somebody, you know, make sure I know about it. We've got to ask the point, they're going to be here, we're out, 
if they want to come, come over, and um, you know, I'm going to try to get out there at least once a week, sit down at the coffee shop, so you can just come in and ask me point blank, what's going on? I'm going to make sure that I'm available to do that. So we're in this. This is a marathon. It's not a sprint, and we're going to take this very seriously. was 
balls of fire. I had big clothes like this on, okay? And those firemen were in there fighting as hard as they could. They could not control it. It was out of control. And the winds did not help. It was just, and, and we saw like houses that were standing and then houses that were completely gone but a flower pot. Okay. I have video that would turn your stomach. I'm glad that I saw stuff that people don't ever have to see. And I'm glad I don't dream to have nightmares. But what I'm trying to tell you is that some of those families, that's all they have left are those animals we saved. And God bless the firemen for what they did. Because that is the most chaotic thing I have ever experienced. And I used to be a federal agent and it's worse than anything I ever did for six years for them. And it was incredibly dangerous. That fire was so intense and so incredibly hot that everybody that helped, in, you know, during that fire is a hero, whether they want to admit it or not. Thank you. And, and the animals, you know, the animals, I, all, I would, all I would suggest, if you're ever in a situation like that again and you don't know what to do, if you have animals, at least let them out. Let them out. Do not leave them in their pins. Do not leave them in their round pens. Don't leave dogs in their cages that we were running into fire in their pens, okay? With like uh, Great Pyrenees dogs had fire in their pens and horses were trapped. And I know it's a chaotic time, but let your animals out because they have a better chance of surviving if you let them out. If they're trapped somewhere and then the firemen can't get in there or it's, you know, it's too dangerous even for them to risk their own lives and it, the fire's so hot and the wind's blowing and everything. And that, that's just my two cents. So. No, that's very helpful. Thank you very much. Any other questions, comments, speeches? Does anybody have a card that they would like us to read for them? Again, you don't have to stand up and do this. We can, if you want to write it down, we'll uh, read that for you. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, Mr. Glenn. Now, my name is Rich Crawford. I live on the east end of Burgess Road, and just want to uh, speak for a number of volunteers that showed up over there. Um, the fire, uh, most of the maps don't show it, but the fire did reach down to within 100 feet of, 150 feet of Burgess Road, uh, just west of the intersection with the Goodson Road there. And there were volunteers out fighting it there. Starting with one, two, three, three to a dozen, and by nightfall on the uh, Wednesday night, there were 20 folks out there fighting it. Uh, not at, no professionals, no firefighters, no helicopters, no air, and, uh, and no fire apparatus. And uh, they did, a, did an excellent job and pushed the fire back, saved a barn, a home, unbeknownst to us, a neighbor west of us lost the home. We didn't know about that. We were kind of too busy to go ask them, I guess. And, um, well, my point is, uh, during uh, the second day, we have been, uh, well, the second day of the fire, it was Wednesday. During the second day we were fighting, it would have been Thursday. Uh, our team was uh, told to leave by the sheriff's office. And again, there was no uh, professional firefighters there to take over. Our team needed to be there. And uh, they were told to leave, and we came back in there uh, the next morning and continued it. I was gone at the time. I was 100 miles away when they uh, were asked to leave. And, uh, just since the homeowner himself wasn't there, and our team was over helping on the, uh, that homeowner's property, saved his barn, saved his home, uh, I'm suggesting the sheriff's office need to uh, develop a higher degree for uh, a respect for volunteers and let them continue to do their job uh, while they're busy keeping looters and other non uh, residents out, that's fine, but uh, let the volunteers continue to uh, fight the fire if that's what they're doing, without uh, uh, being asked to leave by the sheriff. Appreciate your comment, thank you. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is CJ, and uh, I'm a registered nurse and a licensed professional counselor. I'm also a case manager at Mercy's Gate, which is a charity that is um, compounded of 50 <coughs> churches in the community. And I just was wanting to answer Michelle's earlier question um, about that funding. Um, we help with a lot of those things because certain funds have been allotted to us. And I know, like you said, um, Westside Cares and uh, uh, 
uh, ecumenical social ministries and different ministries like that. Um, I'm not sure if it comes with the Department of Human Services. But we are able to offer people assistance with like, whether it's a mortgage payment, food, uh, rent, because several have to get other places to live, um, furniture, gas, clothing. Uh, we have nurses available. We have counseling for grief counseling, trauma counseling. So we have lots of services um, that that we are able to offer people. So I just wanted to kind of open that up for anybody that's interested that you might just need an assist, some assistance if you need to pay a certain bill and free up some money. Um, those are things that we can help you with. Thank you very much. Very generous. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, uh, I'd like to also uh, uh, volunteer my business's services to come out and remove uh, timber from your property. If you've gotten a, a volunteers to come out and, and limit and bucket and you have it stacked there and you have people soliciting to come and remove it and charge a fee because they smell insurance money or whatever, give me a call and we'll come out and remove your timber for free. And uh, your business? Yes. Your name? Uh, Black Forest Mill. And uh, we'll come out and, and take it off your property and we'll bring it over to our mill. And if you, if you want a mantle or if you want to put a piece of your old house or your property back into your new, we're more than happy uh, to mill some wood for you in exchange for taking your timber off. Because we see it as a commodity, not as a burden. Uh, we're local and, and this is our community and we want to help. So we're volunteering our services to help people uh, that otherwise would have a difficult time removing that debris from their property. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, ma My name is Jenny Holliday. I'm the administrative volunteer for Black Forest Colorado Process for Losses. I have met several of you through the volunteering time that I have done with Process for Losses and their involvement. Those that I haven't met that are asking some very important questions, how can we get services, who's there to help us, where is this money going? One of the steps that Process for Losses has taken to ensure that we are there to provide help, answer questions, not only for our community, but to help you rebuild. We have, will, as of tomorrow, be incorporated. Our 501c3 is pending. Um, we have been working with the county to get the sandbags, to get the sand. We've been making phone calls. We have a 48-page book that has every number of every assistance service available. We always have our cell phone on us. We always have Wi-Fi available. Uh, we are there in a central location, Black Forest Road and Shoe, to provide that service to you. We can direct you to the help you need. You're not left alone. We are here for our community, standing shoulder to shoulder with our community. And I just want you to know that we've now taken the steps to ensure that we will be here through the recovery, through the rebuild, and any, any need that arises, copy that. Thank you very much. Another topic to think about that we'd love to get some feedback on are our cleanup and debris removal, um, the assistance that you've been able to receive with regard to public health and whether that information has been valuable. Uh, that's an area that, you know, initially right out of the gate we had to address, so I want to make sure that uh, we get some feedback on that so I can provide that to that subcommittee. Um, we have a request uh, from people in the audience that are signing up to get emails on the Black Forest together and on the Alpha County. Um, it's been recommended that we, underneath the Black Forest Fire Assistance Information website, put a contact phone number. That's not there and it's not easily locatable in our website. Sure, we can do that. Thank you. Any other questions, comments?
Yes, sir. Yeah, my name is Robert Weissman. Um, I kind of inadvertently started a charity event to help out with process for losses. My daughter made a comment to me that she didn't think that her voice mattered and that she didn't think that we could make a difference, and it bothered me. So I started a charity event on Facebook. We started a community page. I know a lot of Renaissance Festival performers. We were going to do a small thing in the park and try and raise money for Crosses for Losses. This thing has gathered so much support that it has turned into essentially a two full day event. We have several bands volunteering their time, several Renaissance Festival performers. We have hundreds of people involved in this thing. We've run into some issues with uh, locking in an event site. We're trying to work with La Ferrette to clear that up, but they're needing $3,000 for us to proceed. So we're working on that to see what we can do. This will be an open to the public event. Uh, there will be vending. All the vending fees that I collect are going directly to Crosses for Losses. Uh, they will be on site to collect donations from people for this event. And if you'd like to know more about it, you can check our community page. It's called Black Forest Fire Fair. And uh, anything you guys would like to do to help, we have a lot of people involved. And uh, we just need to lock in an event site to, to hold these events. And so my understanding was that, what was that fee again that Love Freight was charging? $3,000. We have been working with the County Parks Department. I am meeting with them tomorrow to see if we can work out a uh, park donation somewhere we can do this for free. But there are, it's, it's just been amazing how many performers and bands are working with this on a complete volunteer basis. Well, I mean, you know, and, and, and if, if there's ever any, anything I can do to help out, because, you know, this is a community, so if, if people have community contacts, here we have an individual that's trying to raise money and put it back into the community and an entity within that home community wants to charge them $3,000 to raise money to get back to the community. Now, come on, that doesn't really make any sense. So if we know some people that can help out with that, let's make some phone calls and let's make sure this is going to happen. And all the people I'm working with, there's a group uh, that sets up a lot of events in Denver and Omni Con. We've been making a lot of noise with this, especially since FEMA denied individual aid to homeowners. We are all pretty proud about this cause, and we just want to help Black Forest. Well, you, you have my commitment to, to be at the event. Hopefully it's at that location. Hopefully they, they're listening to this message and they'll work with you. But wherever you have it, I will be there to support you. We're looking at having an event September 7th and 8th uh, from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. And like I said, it will be open to the public. We have several ferry performers that are going to be setting up to do presentations and entertainment for children. I just think it's something that could really help out for boosting morale and raising money to help process for losses. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Any other questions or comments? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. We have one other area that we'd like to get some input on this evening. Um, if some of you were at the mentor connections between the Waldo Canyon families and the Black Forest families, we're going to be having our next mentor connection meeting this coming Tuesday evening up at the Pinery. And we would like to know, was there a round table that did not exist? We had a lot of them that were there on um, helping you set up, make your lists on getting uh, insurance information ready to go. We had a team table, a family table, how to do with kids going back to school, um, a couple of insurance tables. If there was a table there that you feel there was a need for that we did not have, we will find if all the Canyon families have volunteered to step up to the plate and come run the table for the Mentor Connection meeting next Tuesday. So if you know what that is, come to the mic, let us write it down so we'll have that ready for you. Thank you. Yes, sir. I do, have, I do have a comment about things that have gone right. Uh, I've never seen a group like the uh, Southern Baptists pitch in and totally selfless volunteer. Uh, you know, I've seen my neighbors that are burned out and they're up there with the loaders and uh, stuff like that. Crew picking up and helping. And no, nothing but a thanks. And I'd like to say thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. And, you know, and I, I want to recognize a group that does not get recognized a lot, and that's our county staff. And I can tell you, um, you know, while I, I get to be in front
front of the microphone and doing this. None of this happens without great people that are working 24-7 for your best interest. These people live in the community. They have personally invested here. I haven't seen a group of individuals that have worked harder. It doesn't matter what department you're in. Every single county employee has been personally invested in this recovery effort because they understand that this is their community and they are 100% committed to doing this. They, they, they get out there, they volunteer, they do things even above and beyond what is called for them. So I personally want to be on record thanking them. Any other questions or comments? We're getting close to wrapping it up. Okay, go ahead. We'd like to hear about the services you're going to be able to provide. Oh, I wasn't going to do an advertisement. Gee, okay. Um, blue shirts, Aspen Point, Crisis Counseling Program. I have a couple of my staff here. Uh, this is one of the female funded programs that did get approved for the Black Forest area. So we're, we're going to be around, you're going to see us, we're there to support and to help get you to the right resources. Um, so, you know, please come and talk with us. The one thing that I noticed in this event, since this is my sixth uh, community disaster that I've worked uh, in one way or another under the umbrella of Aspen Point, and I'd, I'd like the county to seriously consider, they did so many great things, and I met a lot of the individuals that worked the tables at the Disaster Assistance Center, and I've met a number of really outstanding groups that have come together and continue to do great work. We need a better, singular place for people to go to know that they're signing up, let's say for email, in one place that can, and they click a box that says, please share my information with other people. Because I know we have, we have lists in different groups, and I know that, for instance, Black Forest Together is trying to get their list built, and I know other places have lists. I would have loved to have seen the county have a mechanism in place where right from the beginning, they understood the impact of a disaster, pulled this information together and asked for permission to share this information with other organizations right up front so that we could get a more robust um, list to communicate. And also I know the county has tried, but if I could make a recommendation, even though you can't always know what's a county-sponsored event, well, you know it, and we may not know what's county-sponsored versus subcommittee versus not-for-profit versus a vendor that wants to sell their services. We need some way to have all of these in a place where people can go to find out conflicting meetings, meetings that I need to choose which to go to. I think communication, while we did a great job, we could have done a better. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yes, ma'am. Hi, Commissioner. Um, my name is Carrie, and I'm here representing myself, the survivor of Waldo Canyon, um, in the community, and also United Policyholders, which is a not-for-profit uh, consumer resource to help people understand and navigate the insurance process. Um, which obviously is really important when you have such a devastating loss and a loss to the community or maybe multiple disasters in one community in a short period of time like we've had. And I just want to thank the county, the commissioners, um, for making it possible for everyone to have access to organizations like um, United Policyholders, who we had to find ourselves, actually, initially. Um, I've seen the county really learn from Waldo and take a lot of proactive steps to provide resources to you. And I would just encourage you all, individually, when you hear of meetings, to um, just kind of following up on what the gentleman said from Aspen Point, do some research just quickly to find out who is sponsoring the meeting because there are lots of wonderful helpers and there are lots of takers that come in these circumstances. And it's sometimes hard to tell the difference. 
and you can sometimes get some good information from both, but um, you just have to take into account the source and, uh, and you know, take that information in and, and still go into your gut and your judgment before you act, um, because ultimately it's you that it affects. And uh, so thank you for providing opportunities for people to get good, solid information and, um, and to hear about things and to speak, to have a forum like this where the community can speak about what their struggles are and, um, and that sort of thing. So I appreciate that. Thank you. We do have um, a meeting coming up on September 10th that is sponsored by the county also that will help people with their structure Claims and um, start on contents inventory also, and you will see that on the county website as well. Thank you. Yeah, I want to thank you very much. You've been a great partner. I look forward to continuing working. Yes, ma'am. Hi, Jeanette Baker again. Um, when the gentleman spoke here before, it sort of sparked my, my thought process. The disaster relief center was amazing. Um, we had watched TV back and forth, back and forth. Just a quick weather update, soup is open, so just wanted to make sure people were aware of that. We will continue to provide updates. That's my other duty. She was 
but she had done it and she wanted to make sure she shared that information with others. So get the information from us, go there, I'll connect you with her because she's really awesome at doing this. She'll help you. And definitely make sure that you uh, you talk to Peggy Littleton, who's in the back, and she oversees that. But we will we will make sure that you know, we help you with that. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Judy, hi. Thank you for coming. Not to put you on the spot. That's okay. Thank you. I have things to say. Okay, great. I was I would have been disappointed if Judy didn't come up with her with her list to PowerPoint presentation. And, Ten font with them ready to go. <laughs> go right, right to the microphone. Well, here I am, fresh from the battlefield. I got here about half an hour ago in the middle of a hailstorm, so I decided to go back to Black Forest and see what was happening because I'd already driven up to Holson around Paraguay to see what the first round were about. And that storm that was hitting here 45 minutes ago this us, but there's another one. It's going right up Kettle Creek. And I just talked to Max Kirschbaum outside, and he's real worried, and I'm somewhat worried too. But anyway, so that's the weather report. It hailed a lot, hard hail, but not real big. We had very hard center core and clear around it, so that they can tell what's going on. Uh, I just set up the best management practices posters outside, so if you didn't see that at the festival, you can go there. You can pick up the NRCS erosion packet, which is very good and our brand new best practices, best management practices that Black Forest Together's recovery team has put together that links to our website. So if you don't want to run around to NRCS and up to Woodland Park to CSFS and all that, or prowl through all of the long lists on the web, our links will go directly to the one on fire-resistant landscaping or erosion control or whatever. And we're in the process of building that, so there'll be more coming. It's, it's convenient for you to get at. And then the other thing I just wanted to bring up, um, at the Black Forest Together meeting that you were at the other night, I think you were there. Um, no, I wasn't. Right there. There. Okay. But somebody asked a question about whether these small business association loans that are for, quote, repair or replacement of damaged real estate. Okay, those are the exact words in the in, in their literature. I went and talked to them today and said, you know, somebody asked a question the other night, does this include burn tree removal? You know, and then I never did get a clear answer because most of the things that these people are doing is either public relations or processing loans, okay? And they said, well, we really can't say, but, you know, there's a certain amount allowed for debris removal. So then I said, well, so are the trees debris, the black ones or the scorched ones, or are they landscaping? You know, which is most covered in most insurance policies if you have that. But if you're not insured, you don't have that. You know, so could somebody take out a loan and say, I would like to use this to remove burnt trees? And they weren't able to answer that question for me. So I think that's something that we need to look at because I think that's a huge need here. And people are in various conditions of uninsured or insured or insured that don't have enough to move the trees in the house. You know, and I think we need to find out, I mean, certainly this is not the first place this has happened since they do disaster loans. Could we use money for that? So, anyway, I've been passing it on to you because we need to go somewhere higher in the food chain in the SBA to get the answer to that. So, yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much. We'll take that down. Black Forest to rebuild Black Forest 
with black forests. Thank you. I might point out some of green leaf forest are the products, and there's plenty of wood out there for everybody. Okay, uh, green leaf picks up. I need to. Well, I know, but if you're going to advertise one business, we need to advertise another. And, and okay. I understand. I'm just trying to get this for people and help black forests because we are black forests. We're not here to make a buck. We're here to help everyone out. Thank you very much for the public service announcement. Ms. You are entitled to one hug after the meeting. <laughs> It is getting quieter, so there you go. Whatever you did, do it again. So, <laughs> any other questions? Okay, well, going once, going twice. Did you want to? Okay. Yes. Can you do that on the mic, sir? <laughs>
Black Forest and also from the Walden Canyon flood and fires. So, guys, thank you so much. One last meeting that I want to plug before we excuse everybody. It's next Wednesday up at the Pioneer, so that'll be our full committee meeting. And that's where all of the subcommittees will give us a brief presentation of what's going on. So if you weren't able to attend all the other subcommittee meetings, you can go to that one big meeting. Uh, it's going to be 5.30 to 7.30 with the Pioneers next Wednesday. So thank you guys very much. We'll stick around afterwards, and please drive safe and have a good evening.